Hello everyone, and welcome to my review for Kangen Omega Chapter 124. Before I get into this week's review, I'd like to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K God, Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Moonshadow935, Rat, Ryzen 4K, Artist, and Mac Campaign. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon, I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the start of videos, or access to reviews for solo leveling in the boxer, you can always become a patron as well, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description. And of course, if you haven't already, you should definitely subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads, and be sure to like and leave a comment to help boost us up in the algorithm. With that out of the way, let's get on with the review. While I'm very interested in seeing what happens with these other two fights happening outside the tournament, I'm very happy to report that this chapter focuses entirely on Wakatsuki vs. Fei, so we get to see a lot from them in this chapter, mostly just seeing more of Fei's Nico style. As we had pretty much figured, Fei has been avoiding taking any real damage from Wakatsuki through use of the redirection and water kata, um, and according to Oma, Fei's mastery of the water kata is phenomenal. So, um, I know in Ashura, Oma had specifically mastered redirection to such an extent that it was better than his Nico. So, it seems like maybe in Fei's case, his specialty among the katas is the water kata. That would certainly be kind of an interesting thing, uh, you know, for each of them to have their own specific katas that they've mastered to a greater extent than the others. But Fei pulls out a few more new techniques. Well, actually, he uses some familiar techniques as well. He uses the Flame Kata Flash Fire, which is the special footwork that leaves a bunch of after images. I'm pretty sure this showing of it is more impressive than any time we ever saw Oma doing it. Fei just surrounds Wakatsuki. It reminds me a lot of when... Um, Mikazuki Rei used, what was it called, Dreamwalking in his fight against Saw Pang. Uh, very similar to that. Um, and then uses a new technique, the Adamantine Kata Tomahawk Kick. Okubo and Agito are both kind of amazed by how strong Fei is, because he really is, he is doing a bunch of damage to Wakatsuki, which is very impressive due to how fucking durable the guy is. He's so thick, it's very hard to damage him. So, being able to do this without really all that much difficulty is very impressive. Um, now, Fei uses another new technique. This is a combination of the fire and water kata, uh, fire and water kata, um, Shadow King mentioned how there are two techniques in this chapter. They just have a literal translation. They're thinking on what names to give them. Um, and the first one here is Obliteration, which knocks Wakatsuki off his feet, sends him flying across the ring. Um, very powerful strike. Everyone's shocked by this. Um, Fei is joking that it's a Hadouken, which is kind of hilarious. Fei is a big troll. I like this. Um, this is, uh, I think this is a pretty good choice for the Tiger's Esselin for Fey. It makes him a fairly, uh, entertaining villain, as opposed to just being, like, a, a fucking, a Saturday morning cartoon villain like Lutien, where he's just like, ah, yes, my formless is less formed than your formless, Kano Agito. Instead here, it's just him fucking around with Waka. He, he's just flexing all over him and joking around because he doesn't give a shit. It's great. Um, so we actually get to see a bit of reaction from Falcon and Liu Dong Cheng in the infirmary. I'm very happy to see this, uh, because one of the things that I felt has been lacking with a lot of the fights that have worm members in them is we're really not getting much commentary from the purgatory fighters. We're not really getting to see much of their reactions to these reveals. Um, we still don't really see that from Lelong or Carlos this chapter. Uh, which I really would have liked to see, and I hope we will see. Um, but getting to see it from Falcon and Liu is still pretty good. Falcon is shocked by how strong Fei is. He views one thing that Fei does as seemingly a version of misdirection, which was, you know, Falcon's whole big thing, and also the Hadouken. 
because of course Falcon is impressed by that. Um, well, on the other hand, Liu is confused because this is not the Fey that he knows. He he wonders if this is really Fey's power or someone else's because he's never seen Fey like this. And this is what I've wanted. This is the kind of reaction I've wanted from the Purgatory Fighter saying, what's going on with these guys? This is completely different from how we've ever seen them act or fight before. What's going on here? Also, we should bring up again that like all of Liu's friends are gone, Nidon is dead, Faye is evil, Nicholas is secretly an insane psychopath who is also now in the infirmary and may get murdered by Tarashi, so... Things really suck for Liu, at least he has Natoku to hang out with now. Um, but anyway, we go back to Faye beating on Waka with Flashing Steel Blast um, to try and tackle Waka. But now, finally, we get to see some of Waka's countermeasures against the Nico style. We don't get like a specific thing, but he's grappled onto Faye in such a manner that makes him unable to use Weeping Willow and then Waka starts kneeing him in the stomach. Pretty good, pretty good strategy. And then Waka tells Faye to use the advance because Faye's not gonna beat him with the Nico style. Now this is a smart move in theory because as far as Waka knew back then, um, Oma could not use the Nico style and the advance at the same time. I, I think Waka was aware of this to some extent, probably could tell just from watching him fight, is that you can't use the Nico style and the advance at the same time. The boost in like raw strength causes a loss in uh, finesse. And that loss of finesse makes it harder to use the Nico style and some techniques you really just can't use at all. So in his mind, he's like, all right, I can counter the Nico style so that the techniques are not able to just walk all over me. And then I'll force him to use the advance. So then it becomes just more of a battle of brute strength, in which case it's a battle of brute strength. I'm Wakatsuki Takeshi. I would obviously win something like that. And then uh, things do not go as planned for Wakatsuki, because apparently the advance is a relic of the past. And he sends Waka flying in an attack that's very hard to see. The page is kind of messy, but I think that is meant to convey the fucking ridiculous impact of the strike. Sends Waka flying again, leaves like a crater in his chest. And we see that Faye has powered up with the new Nico style tertiary technique, Divine Demon. So, I have a theory on what this is. Some people think this is him combining removal and advance, which is a possibility, I think. Um, but the, the visuals of this look a bit different from how removal usually looks. There aren't the huge bulging veins like you usually have in removal. So I think this is mostly advance um, combined with Fallen Demon. So I think Tiger Nico has combined the two original secret techniques of the Nico style into one thing, which is Divine Demon. Because the advance was according to the, uh, the hallucinations that Oma had and also seemingly according to Kiryu, the advance is basically the power of a god. Then you have Fallen Demon. There's the demon part. So, put the two together, Divine Demon. Now, Faye has ridiculous speed and strength, and his reaction speed is just stupid now. Like, everything is slow for him. Now, I'm wondering if Tiger Nico has worked out the kinks of advance making your fucking heart explode, and Fallen Demon making you go schizo. Who knows? I would assume he probably would have, or, you know, this is what Faye is here for, is that Faye has figured out how to use these techniques without all the drawbacks. Uh, I think it was mentioned that Tiger Nico does not do these things himself. He probably does not use Divine Demon, because these are experimental things, and he's not going to risk his own body on an experiment. That's what Faye and Lutian are for. I've also seen some people suggest that if it's actually advance and removal, which would be ridiculous, because then Fei would be unlocking his body's full potential and then boosting it with advance. Um, maybe Lutian wasn't the prodigy student that Tiger Nico was talking about. 
Oh my god. We taught him wrong on purpose as a joke. That seems to be Lou's character right there. And now we have Faye, who's who's the real the real deal. The the real Fei Wang Fang. Oh god. So uh yeah, things aren't looking too hot for Wakatsuki. It seems we have a new S plus tier character here with Fei. Um and well, you guys should go uh, check out my uh, my Kengen Ashura fighter tier list that I did the other day. Um, I had Waka as basically the top of S tier, but I was not super certain about that. I was considering like putting him bottom S plus. He's he's kind of like in between there. But Fei, yeah, Fei is S plus. So that's a little bit of a problem. So the way it's looking now, Fei is gonna win with not very much difficulty. So, how does Waka pull off the win? For starters, his strike last week was not Demon's Bane. Or not fucking Demon's Bane. Not Blast Core. It kind of looked like Blast Core, based on like the poses and stuff and how much force the punch apparently exerted. But apparently it's not Blast Core. It was just a normal hard punch like the one he used on Gozo in the first round of the Annihilation Tournament. So he still hasn't used Blast Core. That's still something that has not been unveiled yet. So that's still a potential trump card that Waka has. That could turn the fight around. That is basically the main thing. Um, the way I see it is Waka's hope is pretty much just Blast Core. Either he lands a knockout blow on Faye, Blast Core to the jaw or some shit, or, and I find this to be more likely, Waka hits Faye with a Blast Core that does not really damage him that much. It, it isn't a knockout blow, but the force of it pushes Faye out of the ring. So Waka gets the win through ring out. That's the most likely way I see Wakatsuki winning this. I don't really see much of any other way for him to come out on top. Otherwise, he gets beaten by Faye. Not very hard for Faye. This is mostly establishing how ridiculously strong the Tiger's Vessel is. Which, you know what? I'm fine with. I'm rooting for Waka, but I don't mind the Tiger's Vessel winning. It's just kind of like, damn. It's it's like how you feel whenever the bad guy wins, basically. It's like, damn, that sucks. But the Tiger's Vessel is fucking awesome and stupidly strong, so... I, I can't complain. By the way, Shadow King, I'm assuming you're watching this. Once again... Divine Demon is actually a good name for the technique. I fucking like it. You've got alliteration with the Ds at the start of each word, and also Divine and Demon is an oxymoron, so it makes for a really interesting name. You should keep it. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's all I have to say for this week's chapter. Another very good one. We've had like five really good chapters in a row. This is the peak of the tournament, to be totally honest. Um, possibly the peak of Omega. We are at Ashura quality now, which is very good. Something I've mentioned has been kind of missing in a lot of this tournament. Uh, so I'm very pleased with this week's chapter, and I'm very excited to see what happens next week. How Wakatsuki plans on turning this around to any extent. When are we going to get some flashbacks? We're kind of lacking on flashbacks. Um, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. So with that, that's all I have to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kangen Omega chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy discussing Kangen Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. And of course, if you're interested in other series such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Record of Ragnarok, Chainsaw Man, and Bleach, I do videos in those series as well. So, if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.